Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the evening session of uh, Open Work demo session. Uh, my name is Elektra Sipakaki, and I'm a research associate at the Athena Research Center, Greece, and I'll be facilitating this session. Uh, Claudio will start the presentations uh, talking about Open Work. And then Gina will take over, uh, giving us a demo. And then you can ask your questions uh, in the, the chat, or you can raise your hand. Uh, so let's start. And um, passing the ball to Claudia. OK. Thank you, Electra, for the introduction. Just a moment to share my screen. Share. Okay, can you see? Should be yes. the first slide mm -hmm. of the presentation. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, give a brief introduction uh, about the motivation why in open air uh, we started to develop this tool aimed at bridging uh, existing registries of research organizations. Um, basically, the tool uh, has a twofold uh, goal. So supporting the disambiguation of the information that OpenAir gathers and improving the quality of data that describes such organization and better exploitation of the data in the OpenAir research graph around organizations. So a uh, brief digression about what role do, does research organization plays in the context of OpenAir. Uh, the OpenAir technical infrastructure is many things, but the, let's say, uh, it sits on top of the network of repositories that expose metadata about uh, the scientific production and uh, in general on the concept of content provider. One of these content providers are type and are uh, meant to provide information that uh, includes descriptions about research organizations. This can come as a first level citizen like in case of uh, ROAR, which is now supersedes uh, GRID, or as a secondary entity, like in the case of Open Door, so the registries, the registry of open access repositories, or R3 data. The same applies to uh, different funders, like the European Commission or uh, other national funders that OpenAir considers, uh, that includes information about uh, the research. Uh, organization that participates in, uh, in projects. However, uh, in many cases, uh, organi the organizations provided are just textual mentions, often characterized by very thin information, and most importantly, not sharing the same uh, identification schemes. So it, it's not possible to reconcile them using uh, shared identifiers. Uh, this situation poses the base for uh, the motivation behi behind why uh, we had to uh, reconcile this information in order to uh, exploit it in a reasonable way uh, inside of the open air research graph. As you can see from um, the diagram at the center of this uh, slide, uh, you see that organizations are related with other entities in the graph. And the services that OpenAir builds on top of this kind of uh, schema have to rely on precise reconciliation of these mentions. Uh, uh, just to give an example, for one single organization, in this case, uh, University La Sapienza from Rome, we have the same actual real organization uh, provided by different uh, data sources uh, in different uh, variations of the names of the name and uh, persistent identifiers are only provided from uh, the instance open air gets from ROR, the registry of uh, research organizations. So uh, how to uh, group these mentions into coherent uh, clusters that represent the same real world uh, entity? The first approach that OpenAir followed was to um, 
fully automate this process, relying on this ambiguation mechanism that allowed to uh, be uh, configured in a very uh, fine-grained manner. However, the quality of the data and the, uh, I would say the incompleteness of the data that is available out there uh, posed uh, serious challenges in uh, capturing, uh, let's say, a long tail of uncertainty left in the data. Uh, we measured that the majority of organizations were uh, captured correctly, of the duplicates were correctly merged into the same representation, but there was a certain percentage uh, of the data that could not be uh, matched in any way. So we thought about introducing human curation in the loop. So these are the main uh, activity pillars, the main uh, areas of intervention that uh, open our support. On one hand, we did not uh, renounce to the automatic suggestion of duplicates from the algorithm. This is useful because the amount of data is not uh, tractable uh, entirely with a manual approach because we are talking about hundreds of thousands of organizations. So on one hand, we have these automatic suggestions that from time to time are produced by uh, the system. This happens uh, especially in response to uh, large changes in uh, the data that OpenAir aggregates, often following uh, the addition of a new funder that brings in possibly new mentions of new uh, research organizations that participates in the projects. On top of this, then we have the second area that assumes uh, the manual curation of the applicants. So uh, to tackle that part of uh, intervention that cannot be captured automatically with, uh, with, with the algorithm. So users, data curators can confirm or deny what the algorithm suggests. If so, two mentions are actually the same real organizations or not. Finally, uh, the description of the organizations can be enriched by curating uh, the metadata that describes uh, the research organizations. And this will be uh, better explained with the live demo from Gina later. So uh, the limitations of the fully automated approach that we had in place in the beginning, of course, materialized in um, the services that OpenAir has consuming this data. So false positives produced, of course, inaccurate statistics. And this was evident in the first, uh, in the early uh, releases of the institutional and country monitors, as well as inaccurate search results. Uh, for example, searching for the Concordia University, the matches would produce, uh, would, uh, would find only one uh, among the two instances, the one in the United States and uh, not the Canadian one. The same for false positives. Uh, for example, one instance of a certain organizations would be linked to one to a set of papers, another one to the project, but in the end, it's the same organizations. Or uh, the affiliated papers would be scattered across different the different instances. So we have we had strong limitations. So instead of having this straight line connecting the, the application process uh, depicted here with, with these gears, we introduced uh, OpenOrg in uh, the middle where uh, the data is uh, mediated by uh, groups of data curators. The idea uh, originally uh, from uh, the past OpenAir project was to leverage on the group of uh, ex experts from the Open Air Nodes National Open Access Desks, which had uh, the proper, basically, establishment in each uh, participant country and the contacts to uh, engage data curators. So one per participating uh, country. So the idea was to uh, is still to establish group of uh, people working in uh, each country. Um, coordinating themselves and exploiting their knowledge uh, about the research organizations in their country and in their language. 
which is yet another barrier in performing uh, curation uh, centrally. And we designed the tool to have this uh, two users approach. So simple users where this, their scope of activity is limited to a set of selected countries, not limited only to one. They can uh, enrich and edit uh, the metadata describing organizations. They can uh, approve the suggestions from the automated duplicate identification system and can propose uh, new organizations that have to be approved by their um, national administrator, which is uh, an, an order, let's say, an higher order of, of user that inherits the same uh, capabilities. But uh, more than that, it can grant access to simple users for the selected countries and can resolve what we call conflicts, which is a concept uh, that rises when two conf already confirmed organizations are spotted as uh, duplicates. And uh, we shall see uh, in the live demo how this will happen. And here I would pass the floor to Gina. So I should stop the screen sharing here. Thank you, Claudia. Just a few seconds to share my screen. And if everything works properly, you should be seeing the landing page of OpenOrg database, right? Yes. Uh, yes, okay, thank you. So we are going to uh, just see a list of that we think um, are useful to understand how the OpenOrg database works, uh, what are its main functionalities and how mm, the users can interact with those functionalities. So uh, the first organization that we are going to see is uh, a cu already curated organization. And this is the National Research Council of Italy, which is my organization. Uh, I, and we are going to see how this uh, curated org appears in OpenOrg. Well, uh, you can see that we have all the metadata already um, curated and already filled in. We have the acronym, we have, um, we have chosen to show the main name in English, but we have also the Italian uh, name in the aliases part with uh, also uh, other names in other languages and so on. But uh, the important thing to notice here is that the organization uh, has an open org ID. Uh, this uh, ID is intended to be stable and it is given uh, when uh, the organization um, is approved inside OpenOrg uh, database. Uh, here uh, we have uh, beside, oh, the, the metadata management uh, tab and we have the duplicates tab related to this particular uh, organization, to this specific organization. And here, uh, we can see uh, that uh, there are ma many entities that have been spotted by the algorithm, many entities with um, which the automated process recognize with a certain degree of similarity to uh, the principle, the, this main one shown at the top of the page. Uh, we can see that uh, all the um, green check have been uh, um, highlighted and this means that the curator have already accepted what has been suggested by, by the algorithm. So in this case, we have both uh, the, um, the part of the work that has been done, that have been done. And uh, it's also uh, interesting to show what the result is of this work, of this curation work. Well, it's not an immediate result. We have just to wait, uh, let's say, a few days or, or, or uh, some days, uh, let's say, uh, in order to have all the databases and the systems aligned. But the result is that we can see, uh, is what we can see, for example, here in the Explore portal of OpenAir, uh, which is, um, we have all the result uh, activity, all the activities and uh, results of the research of this organization organization collected here together in the same page and uh, not scattered anymore in the many entities that uh, this organization can have um, uh, in, the, uh, um, in the many data sources. 
Uh, well, going back uh, to the example, uh, we can um, just look at uh, another uh, example. Uh, you uh, see, I just performed simple search. And in this case, I'm going to show another Italian institution. It's an healthcare. You can see we have the type of the institution here. It's an healthcare in the sense that it's a hospital performing research activities. Uh, we have uh, under this column, uh, DAPS, uh, we have a sort of summary of the situation of uh, the, um, the applicants that have been rejected the, the, the um, red ones uh, the green ones are those uh, that have been accepted and the blue one is this still um, duplicate that has to be curated by the curator well I entered the page and uh, um, it's all, uh, also in this case we have an, a curated organization so we have an open org ID we have all the metadata already filled in and we go uh, to the duplicate section. Here we can see um, that in some cases we have um, a red cross highlighted uh, and in other cases we have uh, green checks highlighted. This means that uh, in some cases the um, user has rejected the identity. So we're clicking the red Cross the user rejects the identity, uh, and uh, on the contrary, when uh, highlighting the, the green check, uh, the uh, user is confirming the identity. Uh, the other important thing is uh, here is that, for example, in this case, we have um, this question mark highlighted. This means that even if this organization is already curated, uh, the uh, algorithm has Spotted a new possible duplicate. And um, um, I uh, can hear uh, just uh, maybe you can uh, just put off your microphone, please. Okay, uh, in this case, um, the user uh, has to uh, again uh, do the work to accept or reject the identity. Uh, maybe a new data source has been ingested, and so the algorithm still uh, has found a new um, possible duplicate that curator has to um, has to curate. Uh, so in this case, I can just uh, look at the at the names; uh, they are the same. So it's easy for me to uh, just say that they are the same. Uh, I check on the green check uh, and I click on save and confirm the action and the work is done. Uh, well, uh, another example that um, uh, the, uh, here the important thing to say is that the, the curation of duplicates can be performed by all type of users. Also, simple users can curate duplicates. Uh, what we are seeing uh, now is a different type of work that has um, uh, that needs a, a national admin, and it, it is the um, approval of a new org inside OpenAir the chosen um, institution is this one. I can understand that it is an organization that has still to be approved because uh, the ID is not the open org ID. And uh, also I have this uh, orange stripe that uh, tells me that the organization has still to be um, approved. So ingested inside um, the open org database. Uh, basically I can see, I can um, uh, improve uh, uh, and uh, enrich metadata. It's quite easy for me because uh, I can see from the name, well, actually the name is written half in English and half in Italian. So I can first of all edit uh, its name and uh, complete uh, the, the main name uh, with the English wording. Then I can say that it is located in Siena without performing for the research, it's easy for me to just to state that. And I can say that it is uh, an education 
because it's a university, so uh, a stipe, I can uh, just say that it's education. And I can approve uh, this new organization and the work is done also in this case. Now I can, uh, again, uh, curate duplicates. Uh, I have this new um, tag, so I, uh, I understand that, uh, that I have um, duplicates just to accept or reject. And uh, I can see that it is the same and just uh, I save and the work is done again. Uh, well, uh, the other uh, example that I want to show is the curation uh, and the resolution of conflicts. Also in this case, uh, it's uh, a task that has to be performed by a national admin. Uh, here is a list of um, uh, conflicts. Conflicts are created when uh, the user by mistake approves uh, the same organization more than once. Uh, this action, this means that the same organization has uh, uh, different open org IDs. And obviously this is not what we want to, uh, to have. It's not uh, the situation that we want. Uh, and, um, but it can happen that the user uh, makes this type of mistake, especially when he has to create a huge uh, um, uh, list of research organizations. So uh, it, there is the possibility to, um, to uh, resolve these uh, conflicts. Conflicts can be manually added by the data curator if uh, the curator perceives that he has or she has uh, just done this type of mistake or can be detected by the algorithm. And in this last case, uh, you will find it under uh, in this uh, section, uh, under the curation section, uh, the, um, potential conflicts uh, uh, section. Uh, well, uh, the example that I have selected is this one. Uh, we can say that we have um, basically uh, an organization uh, with the name uh, in Spanish and then the same name, the, 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 the translation uh, in English. Uh, they are both located in Madrid and uh, I can click on resolve manually just to have a quick look at the metadata just to, uh, is the to have a easier uh, confrontation uh, comparison on between the uh, two organization. Well, uh, in, uh, uh, in this case, I see that I have the acronym that uh, in the English, um, in the English uh, page, I have the acronym. Uh, which corresponds basically to the capital letters of the Spanish name. So this is a hint that I am, uh, they, they are the same organization. And then just, uh, I can have a look on, at the website. And uh, also in this case, I can see that I have just uh, with a quick look, I have the Spanish name. So I can say that they are uh, the same organization. Uh, with the manual resolution, which I am using uh, um, at this mo in this moment, I can select uh, which uh, of the two organization I want to become the main organization. Uh, this means uh, that um, the um, uh, metadata of this organization will be visible in the main page. Uh, so I select the one with the English uh, name and then I select the other, uh, which become, becomes the secondary organization, and I just merge uh, them together. And again, the work is done. The other possibility that I have is to use this uh, orange button uh, to merge them all. Uh, but it, in this case, I uh, do not have the possibility uh, to choose which of the organization is the, will be the main one, just the, the first will be the main one. Uh, well, uh, the other the other actions that the other action that the, the curator can perform is to create a new organization here. Um, in, also, in these cases, both the simple user and the national admin can create a new organization, uh, but the organization created by the simple users uh, have to be approved by the national admin. So for the approval, we always need the national admin. As you can see, we have only uh, three uh, fields that are mandatory. Uh, 
uh, as for type, uh, you can also put a known if it's the case that you don't, do not know what the type is. Uh, there are mm, different mm, uh, fields that you can fill in. The important thing uh, to say here is that not all the metadata have to be uh, filled in and completed all together. Uh, it depends on how much information do you have on the thing or, or on the organization you are created you know, in, in that moment. And um, uh, the recommendation, our recommendation is, of course, to use uh, uh, um, UTF-8 encoding. And um, uh, our idea is also to uh, that it is better to have the main name in English and to have the uh, local language, the name in the local language in aliases. Uh, because this uh, gives the possibility uh, also to have more and more uh, uniformity and uh, uh, in all the uh, ambience that we want to create and all the um, portals related to um, the activities uh, linked to open science. Uh, well, I think that I have already shown all the main um, uh, activities that the uh, user can perform. I can just to wrap up, uh, uh, remember that you can perform simple search uh, and also using part of the name of the organization, and then you can browse the organization by country and by type. Uh, under the curation menu, you have um, uh, three lists uh, where you can find all the basic activities that the user can perform. Uh, suggested organization are the organization that has still to be approved by the national admin. Uh, the organization with new duplicates is the section when you uh, can find listed all the um, organization with the possible duplicates detected by the auto automated part of the work and which the user has to confirm or reject. And then the potential conflict is where uh, conflicts um, uh, detected by the algorithm are listed. Uh, well, uh, we can now go back uh, to our slides just to uh, have a look at what are the next uh, steps that we want to do. Um, and uh, of course, the very last slides will be on how to join the creators team. But I think that on this slide, uh, Claudio wants to add and to spend a few words, right? Claudio? Uh, yes, thanks, Gina. Just to uh... Uh, tell that the promotion to production is uh, around the corner. Uh, the, it's clear from, I think it's clear from the presentation that the tool was developed as uh, with, for internal opener purposes, but we do believe uh, that it can provide uh, an added value also to others willing to uh, do similar initiatives uh, li like ROAR, for example. For, uh, for this reason, uh, we're going to build a front face portal to explore the data and the, the system will, uh, uh, will expose an API that will allow other initiatives to consume uh, the correspondences between the PIDs uh, of uh, identical organizations. So the groups that are created uh, will be exposed for others to, uh, to integrate. And uh, since for now, the kind of data sources uh, are, let's say, globally available, but not all, uh, all the time can capture the reality of uh, research organizations uh, in a given country, uh, it is always uh, true, uh, uh, a common said that not everything that counts can be counted. And at the same time, not everything that can be counted counts. Uh, it's we believe that it's important to engage with individual countries to integrate with national institution registries that are official and uh, a reference for the given countries in order to have an actual impact for uh, that country. So this is a work that we'll have to leverage on the entire uh, open air network of collaborations that have been established over the years. And we do believe this is uh, where we have to spend most uh, of our time, probably. 
if we want to really go into uh, the depths of uh, the research organization realities in the specific countries. This will allow, of course, to uh, engage new curators and extend uh, data curation teams. So yes, uh, how to join? I think we can go to the next slide, yes. Uh, we have an open um, email, open or admin. You can write uh, to that email to get in contact with us. And if you go to beta orgs, open EU, and in future to orgs, open EU, the, the moment will be promoted to production. Uh, if you don't have yet an open air account, you will be asked to create one and select the countries that you want to contribute to. So please present your, yourself uh, with an email so that we can welcome you uh, to the groups of curators. Okay. So uh, I think now in the chat, there is one question for you from Giovanni. Giovanni, yes. Uh, how many national creation teams are currently working? Uh, I think around eight countries are subject to creation. Something like around that, yes. Yes, I think for, so. For sure. Um, I, I, I can anticipate that we have selected uh, four institutions for uh, four in, in individual from, from different uh, four countries that will be the basis for the development of institutional dashboards. So I personally focused on curating a selection of those organizations uh, to, for, to progress on uh, the development of uh, on other fronts, but for sure, uh, some other national open access desks uh, from, from open air are uh, contributing to uh, this uh, data curation journey. Are there uh, other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, another question from Eric. Could you elaborate on the automatic treatments that are implemented before the manipulation? Uh, yes, essentially, uh, there is an algorithm that is based on uh, essentially uh, traditional uh, entity disambiguation techniques. So uh, we have a set of clustering functions that groups uh, the organization mentions together according to these uh, signatures that are created in order to uh, perform pair pairwise comparison uh, inside of each group. So inside uh, where we assume that in every group that are most likely to be found duplicates rather than uh, organizations that do not share uh, anything with each other. So starting from there, we perform uh, pairwise comparisons. Uh, and from there, we have a pruning of the groups that are created there. Then uh, every group is uh, identified as a clique. So we compute the transitive equivalence among the different groups that are created. Uh, but all these runs on a quite large uh, cluster. The implementation is based on top of a and Spark. So uh, to process all the duplicates, it takes no more than 10 minutes or something like that. So. Uh... Oh, uh, there's another one coming from Yanka, I think. Oh, yes, you may have mentioned this. In curating organizations, are you keeping any original identifiers? Of course, yes. If uh, any organization provide a persistent ID, these are the identifiers that are uh, mostly interesting for us. All of them are kept. So, and, and actually they are exploited by the automatic uh, duplicate suggestion systems. Those are uh, part of the fields that are matched. If we find that two organizations uh, Let's, let's imagine that uh, tomorrow ROAR start to provide also the peak numbers of the organizations coming from the commission. Uh, then this would be uh, actually alleviate the burden for the algorithm because uh, matching the PIDs is currently 
an exit, an early exit strategy for the algorithm before going to uh, the textual similarities between the titles. But yes, they are uh, they are kept. So, are there any other questions or other points to make? So, I'll take this as a no. And I would like to thank uh, Dean and Claudio for their presentation and presenting us the uh, openers. It, it seems to be a, a very interesting tool and the tool that it will that will uh, solve an important problem of metadata disambiguity. Uh, um, thank you all for joining. I know it was a very long day for you. Uh, and um, see you tomorrow. Uh, enjoy the rest of the fair. Uh, I'm going to close uh, the session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all, bye-bye.